Well, the war has come and the war has come and gone. Welcome everyone to the AEW Winter is Coming review. This is your kid, DC Wrestling, back at it again with another video. And can I just say, man, this was an amazing AEW Dynamite. Well, you can't really call it AEW Dynamite, but a very special edition of AEW Dynamite, man. This was a really good um, show, especially with the main event. We're going to get into the main event, but we have to talk about the card. Um, first things first, I just want to say, man, shout out to all these wrestlers, man. And even the fans, man, the referees, everyone, because I literally checked the temperature that was at Daly's place, and it was saying that they were wrestling like 47 degrees of weather, and that is just respect, dude, because not a lot of people can legit wrestle in the legit cold and seeing these wrestlers half naked, <laughs> literally wrestling, you know, in the fucking cold, man, just respect, bro, so respect them wrestlers, man, because they didn't have to do that, I know I couldn't, anyways, man, we ain't gonna waste any time here, we had the, you know, we kicked off the night with the Battle Royal for the AW Di Dynamite Diamond Ring, MJF and Orange Cassidy, um, um, obviously being the last two competitors, um, Orange Cassidy obviously winning by eliminating Wardlow at the end, which means that next week on Dynamite, MGF and Orange Cassidy will face each other to see who would win the Dynamite Diamond Ring. I thought this was a pretty good opening, pretty good solid opening. Um, I actually thought for a second with the way Miro was dominating at the end, I thought Miro was going to be the one to pick up the win, but, you know, he wasn't. But this is pretty cool. Um, MJF versus Orange Cassidy. I think Orange Cassidy will win the diamond ring because MGF already has the diamond ring and he doesn't really need a second one. Like, what is he going to do with a second one? So, yeah, man, like, you know, that's my thoughts on the diamond ring match. So, yeah. Anyway, so the second match we have for the first time ever, Chris Jericho versus Frankie Kazarian. Chris Jericho facing... Um, Frankie Kazaria near the end, um, MGF coming out looking to throw in the towel, which was a little reminiscent from, um, you know, full gear last year with, you know, MJF throwing in the towel for Cody, but, um, Jericho, you know, didn't see it. And then, you know, obviously Sammy coming out, um, to stop him and Jericho questioning what Sammy's doing out there. And then, you know, Jericho obviously wins. Um, and what was a decent match, you know, even though the match was 10 minutes, it was decent. It was okay. They could have won a little bit more, but, you know, for, it was what it is. And it was a pretty good, decent match. After the match, the inner circle was pretty much arguing, which is kind of crazy because literally about almost a year ago, Jericho was talking about the inner circle never argues and we never fight. And here they are literally fighting. And, you know, Jericho was like... I'll give y'all seven days to clear your heads. And if we can't come to an agreement, basically, then the inner circle is done. The inner circle will be broken up forever, basically. And Jericho leaves the ring while the inner circle members are continuing arguing. The next match, Dr. Britt Baker, DMD versus Layla uh, Hertz. I just want to say this, man. So in the last video, um, my AW predictions, winner is coming predictions. I said that Layla Hirsch is nothing but a jobber. You know what I mean? Because I never saw her fight before. And one of the people, one of the, uh, you know, guys that were watching my video, comment on the video was saying that, you know, this Layla Hirsch girl, she's not a jobber. She was um, on AEW Dark, man. And she was, you know, you should check her out. So as the... Um, person that I am, I checked around AEW Dark. I saw that she had a match with the legit AEW Women's World Champion Akara Shida, and I thought Layla Hirsch, maybe she isn't a jobber. She's pretty decent in the ring, you know. Maybe she improves just a little bit, you know. She'll maybe have a little bit of potential. So I take back for what I said uh, last time, um, and I'll give it. You know, you know, like he, like the dude said, Layla Hirsch had a chance in this match, and yes, she lost, but they at least gave her a fighting chance. At least they made it seem like she was going to be um, beat Britt Baker, DMD. After the match, um, obviously, um, Thunder Rosa coming out, attacking Britt Baker, obviously con continuing their feud. 
Um, obviously, like I said, they're most likely going to be facing each other at AEW Revolution. I believe in my personal opinion, I think that's where they're going to face off. So, yeah. Um, but what a worth. It was It was okay. I'm, it was meh, to be honest with you. I mean, that's kind of what most of these matches. It, it wasn't until the main event. You know what I mean? Like, the matches were, weren't were bad. But, you know, they could have been maybe just a little bit better. But with the time that they had, obviously, you know, with, with the Moxley and Omega match, because it was being built as the biggest match on the card, the biggest match in AEW Dynamite history, you know? Hell, this whole event was labeled as their biggest Dynamite yet. And with the shit that happened, especially coming what I'm about to talk about next, I can see why they said this was their biggest Dynamite yet. Next, we have a tag team match. We have Darby Allin and Cody Rhodes defeating Team Taz. And um, I said in the predictions, I wanted Team Taz to win. Uh, I really feel like Team Taz should have won because this is the first time that you have um, Ricky Starks, Ricky Starks, um, you know, teaming with, uh, you know, I mean, with Powerhouse Hobbs and Powerhouse Hobbs being a part of Team Taz. And they need that momentum. They need that steam to get the, the, the train rolling. And they could have done that tonight, but, you know, obviously with Darby being the TNT champion, which is completely understandable, but they could have had Cody take the pin and um, Darby didn't have to take the pin. That way Darby wouldn't, you know, get blasted on, oh, he's a TNT champion and he's getting and he's still getting pinned clean on um, Dynamite. But the big thing was not really the match. I'm being perfectly honest with you. It was after the match because... <laughs> For the, there was an attack, obviously. Brian Cage coming out. Um, obviously, um, Dustin coming out. But the big thing, and I think one of the biggest things of this night, was that for the first time ever since the final episode of WCW, the Stinger, the Icon, one of the greatest WCW wrestlers of all time, former WCW world champion, WWE Hall of Famer, the icon, the legend, Sting, debuted on AEW. And, and as they the announcer said, Sting has signed a multi-year contract with All Elite Wrestling. Sting is All Elite with All Elite Wrestling. And, you know, you could not wipe the smile off my face the moment that I saw Sting show up in AEW. Um, you know, it's good to have Sting in, in AEW. I think this could be really good. This could potentially get some more eyes on AEW because it's it's Sting. I mean, who wouldn't want to tune in to watch Sting? I mean, come on, people. Um, obviously, you know, there's going to be people that's going to be like, well, Sting is a is an ex-WWE. Come on. Come on. Let, let, let's not... Come on, let let Sting have his moment here. But anyways, bro, but but for real here, in all seriousness, um, I said before, well, I knew Sting was coming. I just didn't think it was gonna be tonight. I actually thought he was gonna show up at full gear, but he didn't. But um, I said that you know Sting being paired up with Darby, I didn't think Darby needed that manager, um, because Darby you know is himself, but. I'm willing to give things a chance. I think, you know, what what stuff happens, you have to be willing to give things a chance. And if Sting is going to be Darby Allen's, you know, henchman, well, manager, you know, his boy, then I'm guessing that I'm willing to give it a chance. But if it doesn't go right and it doesn't go well, then I'm be like, man, just put Sting backstage to coach or something. Because I know everyone's talking about how old Sting could wrestle. Well, Sting hasn't wrestled since Night of Champions. Sting is retired. Sting can't wrestle anymore because of what happened. Because Seth Rollins buckle bombed him, buckle bombed him. But I'm not gonna get into all that. A great debut. Well, not for the TNT Network, cause last time Sting was on TNT was the final episode of WCW, and he fought Ric Flair. And it's crazy because he fought Ric Flair in the final match at WCW, and they were literally the first match on WCW. So I find that pretty well. Um, the main event, 
John Moxley versus Kenny Omega for the AW World Championship. Kenny Omega winning the championship. Um, I kind of find it quite funny. Many people were actually thinking that Omega, well, Kenta from New Japan, because Kenta has the briefcase for the um, IWGP United States Championship, which is being held by Moxley. And people were actually thinking, because Kenta even tweeted out himself that he might be showing up tonight. And people were legit thinking he was going to show up, but Kenta was just trolling because everyone wants to see New Japan and AEW. And we're most likely not going to see that. But I will tell you what we're going to see after I talk about this match because this match was legit amazing. It was absolutely amazing. Bell to bell, post to post. Um, I know some will argue and say their match in full gear was way better, which is totally understandable. But this match, for what it was worth, it it really did good. And you got to give them credit because they legit, in some people's eyes even, lived up to the build. Um, having Kenny go over was the right call. Um, having Don Callis on commentary, having Don Callis there, you know, and especially with him, you know, with Moxley, it was like, what the hell is he going to do? And then when Kenny won, when he beat Moxley, you know, you're ha you have Don Callis celebrating, you know, celebrating. Yes, yes. And they're leaving the arena. Tony Khan's pissed. The announcers are pissed. The wrestlers are pissed. Kenny and Callis are leaving. Alex Mardez, I think that's the interviewer's name, comes up to Omega and 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 Callis and he's telling them yo like what's going on like wh what's happening what what happened there and Callis is like I'll explain it on Tuesday but the commentator and and, he, and I think even um Alex even said but but Dynamite's Wednesday what do you mean Tuesday and that's when he said we're showing up on impact ladies and gentlemen Kenny it's going to be so funny because Omega they're going to be like what in God's name is Kenny Omega Doing an impact zone. You know what I mean? But yes, people. I'm not shitting you. I'm not clickbaiting you. Kenny Omega next Tuesday night will be showing up on Impact Wrestling. Which you don't even have to say it. You don't even say, that. oh, it's rumor. It's being speculated. No. You don't even have to spoil it. Because this right here is a stone cold fact. AEW... And Impact Wrestling have a working relationship. Now, I know some will be like, Impact Wrestling, who the fuck they got over there? Think about it. Impact's got some good talent over there. You got Deion Perez. You got The North. You got The Good Brothers. You got Sammy Callahan. You got Eric Young. You got some decent talent over there. Impact's not bad. Impact's not bad as many people think they are. And if you think about it, this can help Impact as well. Because people are going to be tuning in to Impact next Tuesday. Mainly to see, oh, what's Kenny going to say? What's Kenny going to say? What's Don going to say? Wh what happened? You got to watch it. You can't watch it on Dynamite. You got to watch it on Access TV. 340 if you're on Direct TV on Impact Wrestling. And I can't wait to watch Impact Wrestling. So this is good. I think this has potential to be a good relationship. I know a lot of fans want to see AW New Japan, but you know, especially with everything going right now, traveling, you know, the COVID. It's just this is the only thing that's possible. You know what I mean? So shout out to Impact and AW. Uh, looks like they're gonna start coming together, which is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, so decent event. Um, I thought AW Winter Coming was, like I said, a decent pay-per-view event. And um, that's all I could say. Um, Kenny wins. I don't know what the hell they're going to do with Moxley because he's most likely going to take some time off, understandable. He, he's not going to show up at Wrestle Kingdom. Tony Khan literally said it on the call that, oh, yeah, he's not showing up. He's not showing up at Wrestle Kingdom. And... Number one, he, he might be trolling. Like, who knows? Maybe Tony Khan's like, oh, he's actually showing up. I'm just not going to blurtly say he's going to show up. But if he legit doesn't show up, then why does he still have the title? Just, just take the title. Take the U.S. title off him. Have Tanahashi and, and Kenta in a, in, a, 
in a vacant title match for the title at Wrestle Kingdom or something like that. Anyways, y'all, so I will see y'all later. I'll be back with another video. Um, unless if you're in the comment section, you know, tell me uh, what you want to see, actually. Um, like, what do you want me to talk about in my next video, wrestling-wise or something like that? And, uh, yeah. Yeah.